All right, determinants. Determinants is something that we do mathematically. We find a number. Nobody really knows what it means. Or do you? Well, it is quite significant, and it makes a, a, it, it is helpful to understand matrices. Right? It's an, it's an interesting number. Definition. The determinant of matrix A is a combination of row I and the cofactors of row I. So what's a cofactor? A cofactor is this one here. Determinant of that little cube and uh, of that uh, of that of, of uh, a smaller piece of the bigger matrix and all that. So add them together, you find the number that's called the determinant. <coughs> now, what is significant about this are its properties. Some properties of determinants. So let's look at this. You multiply a number with A and take its determinant, or and you, you take the determinant and multiply it with the number, it will be the same. The determinant of the identity matrix is 1. A determinant is actually a number, right? The output determinant is a number, it's not a matrix, it's a scalar number. So imagine you have a matrix that's 8 by 8, 10 by 10, 20 by 20, lots of numbers, and it reduces to actually one number, that's the determinant. It's one number, one scalar number. And that scalar number tells you things about that huge matrix. And that is quite significant if you think about it. So, look at number three. If two rows are equal, determinant A is equal to zero. Elementary matrix operations do not change determinants, meaning that you, multi you add a column to a row, you multiply a row, you can add it to a column, things like that. If A has a zero row, determinant A is equal to zero. If A is n cross n is a triangular matrix, the determinant A is this one. Triangular matrix means this. Um, there we go, it's here. Sorry, okay. So this would be an upper triangular matrix. This would all be zeros, and that would be upper triangular. So if you want to find the determinant, you just multiply the diagonals, the numbers on the diagonal, and that will be the determinant of A, okay? Determinant of A is equal to A1 times A2 times A1. <coughs> if it's a lower triangle, meaning that you have numbers over here and you have zeros over here, it will be again the same. So if A n cross n is a triangular matrix, then the determinant is basically the multiplication of the diagonal. Now here is the important one. If determinant A is equal to zero, then A is called a singular matrix, which also means, because of the things we have seen in the last hour, that A is not invertible, A is not full rank, and determinant A is equal to zero, which means it's a singular matrix. So when I tell you a matrix is a singular matrix, it also means it's not invertible. Okay? It also means it's not full rank. All right? And determinant A is equal to zero. This is what we call a singular matrix. A matrix is not invertible. It's a singular matrix. Okay? A times B, the determinant is equal to determinant A, determinant B. Determinant A transpose is equal to determinant A. So it's quite interesting that the transpose and the matrix itself share the same determinant. So as far as 
This course is, uh, is, is concerned, this is the most significant one. If determinant A is not equal to zero, it is not equal to zero, then A over minus one, inver it is invertible and it is full rank. So this is kind of what's significant here, for us at least for this course. So I will take a lot of determinants of matrices just to see if the, if, the air, if, if the matrix is invertible or if it's full rank and things like that, all right? And you will do two. In the exam probably you will check the determinant and say it's full rank, it's not full rank. Because if it's full rank, it will mean something in, in your controller. Understand? So that's why this is important. Okay. If you want to learn more about determinants, really go back to your linear algebra book. I'm sure there's a lot of interesting things about determinants. All right. Good. Eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Everybody has probably heard of this. Everybody has learned at some point eigenvalues and eigenvectors. It is, it is also very interesting. Let's say you have a matrix A. Okay, let's say you have a matrix A. And X is a vector. This is a scalar lambda. And this is a vector X. So X is a vector. A is a matrix, of course. And lambda is a scalar. Okay? And if you can write this equation, and if you can satisfy this equation with a certain combination of x and lambdas, if you can satisfy, if you can find x's and lambdas that will satisfy this equation, then this is called the eigenvector, and this is the eigenvalue. Again, we only have a matrix. That's our starting point. We have just a matrix A. And now I'm searching for vectors and scalars. I'm searching for them. I don't know what they are. That will satisfy this equation. If you can find that, then I have an eigenvalue and an eigenvector. So it's not like someone is giving me a vector and I'm trying to find a, a scalar and uh, I, I, I try to find a, a matrix. It's not none of those. I just have a matrix. I'm trying to find a combination of a vector and a scalar that will satisfy this. If it satisfies this, it's an eigenvalue and eigenvector. Now, why is this significant? Why is it significant? Let me tell you. Here, here, let me try to explain you why this is so significant. Here's the thing. Let's take the vector x, okay? Let's say it's in a two-dimensional space, x and y. And let's say x is our vector. So not to confuse it, let's make it like this, so that this is a two-dimensional vector space. x is a vector, okay, x. If you multiply x with a scalar number, let's say you multiply it with 1.5, what's going to happen to the vector? It's going to move in the same direction. It's just going to be larger, right? Multiply x, the vector x with 1.2, right? Multiply it with 1.2, and let's call this x1. It will be just a bigger vector. Will it change direction? No. So, so, so this is x times, sorry, lambda times x. So you're multiplying x with a scalar, so it, will, it, it is a vector. x was here, this was x, and this is here, x1. It is lambda times x, so you just multiply it. It's in the same direction, same line of action. It is just a change in magnitude didn't change direction, right? So this is what it is. Lambda times x didn't change the direction of x. It is just making the vector bigger or smaller, depending on what you multiply here, OK? Keep that in the pocket and remember that. Scalar times vector doesn't change direction, just change magnitude. Now, 
If you multiply a vector with a matrix, would it change the direction? Would the result be a different vector? Normally. Normally, yes. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Let's say A is, I don't know, just to make it simple, make it 1, 2, um, I don't know, 2, 1. Okay? And let's say X is a vector that is 1, 1. All right? So it looks like this. 1, 1. So that's your X vector. All right? So A times X is going to be what? Can you tell me what it is? 3, right? A times X. Multiply it like that. 3, 3. So that didn't work out very well. Let's make this one 3. Okay? Okay? I will tell you why it didn't work. It's quite funny. get four, here you get three, right? So it's four here, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it is more like More like that. Let's call this X1. So you multiply this X with this matrix and you get a new vector. Did it change the direction? Yes. So normally it would change the direction of the vector. Okay? So a matrix. Typically, if you multiply a matrix with an x, with a vector, it will change the direction of the vector. That's what matrices do. They change the direction. If you multiply it with a vector, it will change the direction of the matrix. Okay? But there are special vectors for which A does not change the direction. Okay? So special vectors that do not change the direction of that vector. It is as if the vector is multiplied not with a matrix, but with a scalar. Those special vectors are unique. And they are called the eigenvectors of A. Because it looks like a, the matrix, which is actually can be a large set of numbers, acts to this vector as if it is a scalar. And this is what it says. It says, take a vector, multiply it with a scalar, and it will be still the vector that is in the same direction as x, right? Take that same x, which is pointing in a certain direction, multiply it with a matrix, it is still in the same direction of x, which is not typical. Typically, this would change the direction of x. Okay? So, for this vector, this matrix acts as if it is a scalar, which is quite a big thing. I mean, we are talking, this could be a very large thing, right? x could be of size 10. a could be a 10 by 10, a lot of numbers. But that big matrix acts to this x as if it is a scalar. Isn't that weird? It doesn't change the direction of x. A does not have the power to change the direction of x. That is a special vector. This combination is a special combination. So it almost feels like that vector belongs to that matrix. Okay. It almost feels like they all point in the same direction. Of course, the matrix doesn't really have a direction, but it feels like it belongs to that. They belong to each other. Okay? 
Therefore, we call this one an eigenvector. Eigen means, it's again German, it means your own. Do you know that? Okay, eigen is eigen, it's your own vector. Eigenvalue is your own value. So it is the number, the scalar, and the matrix that belongs to A. It's the eigenvalue and the eigenvector of A. Because it is this one vector that cannot change direction using A. In fact, if you multiply it, it acts like a scalar. And that scalar has a magnitude of lambda. OK? So if you multiply this x with this a, you must ask, OK, how much are we moving? Oh, this much are you moving. To this vector, this a is nothing but, it feels like it's nothing but a scalar of this magnitude. And therefore, this x and this lambda, they're very special. Because the a does not change the direction of x. And this is what we call the eigenvalue problem. It is a set of vectors for which A cannot change the direction. Every other vector you multiply with A, it will change direction. But this one, it doesn't. That's why we call, that's why they are special. And they are unique. They are unique. Okay? They are unique. Not the magnitude, but the direction. Anything in that direction, of course. Okay? We'll talk about this in a minute. So what happened in a minute ago when I just put E2 over here, actually I think I found the eigenvalue. I, I, I found the eigenvector of this matrix. <laughs> that was the problem when I put 2 over here. That was this one special vector that didn't change direction, so I made this 3 and it's all good. Okay? I could have done the opposite. I could have, have 2 over here and then make this one 3 and it would work as well. Okay? Does that make sense? Does it make some sort of sense what eigenvalue and eigenvector actually mean? Okay? I mean, even though maybe you don't know what the application might be, you hopefully have a, a sense what they signify. Okay? Any questions? In a lot of books, you will see this and say, that satisfies does this, 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 and nobody really explains why this is. Okay. Not nobody, but a lot of books don't. And I think that's always a little uh, thing that's empty in those, in those books. Okay? All right. So now we can talk more about it. The vector x is called an eigenvector, and this is called lambda. So where can we use this? Let's give this quick example why it will be significant for our work, for our controls work that we are planning to do. Why is it significant for us? Well, consider the initial value problem, v dot is equal to 4v minus 5w, and w dot is equal to 2v minus 3w, where v is equal to 8, and t is equal to 0, and w is equal to 5, and t is equal to 0. Okay, initial value problem. So what we want is we want to solve these differential equations. What does mean solving it? Which means we are looking for v of t, I mean, as a function of time, and we are looking for w of t. So basically, I want to be able to plot this, t versus v and w versus t. This is what we are trying to do. That's the goal. And what, if you wonder what this little dot over here means, it is dv over dt. It's the time derivative of these values. OK? So at time equals 0, v starts at 8. At time equals 0, w starts at 5. And I would like to know how they propagate in time. So that's the goal. When I say let's solve the differential equation, this is what I mean. Because this is an equation, it's a differential equation, you can't immediately see what's going to happen when t is equal to 5 seconds or t is equal to 4 seconds, whatever. You can't really see what that is. So we're going to try to solve this and you will see that a solution of this actually turns into the eigenvalue problem. I think we did this also in flight mechanics. 
right? We did this in flight mechanics. And the eigenvalues actually become, and the eigenvectors become part of the solution, okay? And if you want to know what's happening to the signals over here, the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors help us a lot. So you could write this in vector form. It would look like this, v dot, w dot, is equal to 4 minus 5, 2 and minus 3, and v and w. Okay? And I would call this one, let's call this matrix A. Okay? And I think this one we can call U. All right? And this one we would call U dot. And U is basically a vector that looks like V and W. And this has nothing to do with the control U that I mentioned in the last hour. This is just to represent this, this problem in a more compact way. Is that okay? All right. So, what else? So, then I could actually write, let me remove this part so it doesn't get too confusing. Okay, so, um, so write this in a compact form. You can say du dt is equal to the A matrix times u, so it's this one, with u is equal to u0 at t is equal to 0, okay? And u0 being another vector that will be 8 and 5, okay? So it's written now in a compact form as a vector. It's a 2 by 2. It's simple, so it's, it's a nice problem to, to, to work on. Note that it's a first order linear equation with constant coefficients. The matrix A is time dependent. It's time independent, I'm sorry. A is time independent, okay? A is just fixed numbers, so they will not change in time. So it's a time invariant thing. So, so we want to have a solution for this. Let's think of the solution. Now I'm going to go quick with this because I, I think I did this in flight mechanics for you. So uh, assume that A was not a matrix if uh, A was a scalar. So which means you get have U dot is equal to A times U and U is equal to U zero at T is equal to zero. U and A uh, are, um, are represent scalars, okay? Well, let me do it like this. There's an element of R and A is a real number, okay? What would be the solution to this problem? If it's a simple differential equation, the solution would be what? Can you? What would be u as a function of time? A is a scalar number, u is a variable. u is equal to u0 at t is equal to 0. How, what is the solution of u? It's actually over there. <laughs> okay, u is e to the power at times u0. Okay? So, is this true? Can I check this if this is a true solution? I can check it by plugging this into this equation and see if it holds, right? Let's do it. Let's take the, 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 the derivative of this one with respect to time. What will it be? It will be A e to the power AT times U0, okay. So that's taking the derivative of u dot, right? This is u dot, right? Is equal to a times u, a to the power a t. Same? Yes. Therefore, this is a solution. This is something we do with differential equations quite a lot. We assume a solution and check if it is fitting my problem. That's what I did here. I assume something and see if it fits. It fits? Yes. Oh, okay. So then that's the solution. 
right? It's kind of a, it's a little bit ridiculous, of course. If it's a very complex problem, how are you going to guess it unless you have a lot of experience with this? But this is one way of solving differential equations. You can guess something and see if it fits. Okay, and this is what we did here. Now, I want to do the same thing for my matrix, but in a second. Okay, let me, uh, one second. I want to make a few comments about this. Just by looking at this, I can't really tell if the signal u is going to diverge or converge somewhere. But looking at this solution, I can immediately tell you if A is positive, this u is going to go to infinity as time goes by. Right? If A is negative, this is going to converge to zero as time goes to infinity. If A is negative, as time goes to infinity, u is going to go to zero. So, next time, when I see this problem, without really solving it or plotting it, I'm just going to look at this number. If this number is positive, I will tell immediately, I will say, oh, this is going to diverge. It's going to be unstable. It's going to go to infinity. If I see a negative number here, I will say, oh, this is going to converge to zero as time goes by. In fact, if A is a large number, so A is a large number, it will diverge very quickly. Okay, if this is a large negative number, meaning you know it's it's a big number but it's negative, it will mean it will go to zero very quickly. Right? Let's say it's minus one million versus minus ten. So the minus one million goes to zero very quickly, right? So without really solving or plotting or doing anything, I just look at this number next time and tell you if it's going to diverge converge, how fast it will diverge, or how fast it will converge. So what I'm trying to say is that you don't always have to solve the whole problem if you know what you're looking, uh, if you know what to look at. If you solve it and if you plot this, u versus time, and if a is positive, let's say a is positive, right, you will probably have something like that if you plot it. But without going here, just by looking at this problem, I can tell you if A is, if, if, this, if U is going to go to infinity or not. Okay? So we're going to do a similar thing to this problem, which is now multidimensional. It's not, it's not a scalar thing, but now we have matrices and vectors. Can we do the same thing? Can I look at this thing here? and tell if it's stable or unstable or if something's going to diverge and converge. Can I say something about this just by looking at this? So that's where this eigenvalue eigenvector thing is going to help. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take this, assume a solution like I did here. Of course I know the solution. It's not really an assumption for me. I know the solution. So I'm going to take the solution and put it in here and see if it works. Okay? Good. Um, I think I can remove this one. All right. All right. Okay, so. Okay, sorry. Okay, it's here. Going back to the solution of the ordinary differential equations, assume the solution in the following form. So now we are going to assume a solution. We assume the solution for this problem. So let me remove this scalar problem here. Let's assume solution.
okay? And say x is equal to y and z. y and z are numbers and lambda is a scalar. Okay? So I could write this problem in the following way. I could say u is equal to e to the power lambda t times x, right? The w that was a, u is equal to e to the power lambda t. So this is just assuming a solution. I don't know if this is the solution, but I'm just assuming that it is the solution. All right. Okay. Now. Plug this solution into this and see if it works, okay? This is the problem. Take this, plug it into this and see if it works. So you take V dot, you will get what? You will get lambda E lambda T Y is equal to 4 E lambda T uh, Y minus 5 E to the power lambda T times Z, right? Plugging it into this equation. Now plug it in the second one, you will get lambda e lambda t z is equal to 2 t y minus 3 times e to the power lambda t z. Okay? If, if I can find lambdas and x and uh, y's and z's, then I have a solution for my problem. So these will go, and I'll end up with this, lambda times yz is equal to 5 minus, I'm sorry, 4 minus 5, 2 minus 3, y and z. And as you see here, this is nothing but the matrix A that we had over here. And this is a vector x. So it is lambda times x. It's A times x. So if I can find a solution for x and lambda, x is this. That means I have a solution for y and z and lambda then I will have an equation that will satisfy this and therefore this problem is solved. And if you look at this, if you write it, if you change directions here, this is nothing but the eigenvalue problem. Right? Nothing but the eigenvalue problem. Which basically means, and this is the A matrix, this is the same matrix as this one, which basically means if you can find the eigenvalue and the eigenvector for this A matrix, you have a solution for your problem. You can solve this problem. You can solve it as a function of time. You can finally plot V and W as a function of time. Linear differential equations like this, they always turn themselves at the solution of those linear differential equations. Can be written as, they turn into eigenvalue problems basically. Okay? All right. So all we need to do is now find the eigenvalue and the eigenvector of A, plug it into these equations, and then you have a solution. So I think this is what's being done next over here. Ah, take the eigenvalue problem, and you can write it like this A, X, minus lambda x is equal to zero, right? I mean, you can take it to the other side. So you can take it into the x parenthesis. It will be a minus lambda i, i being the identity matrix, times x is equal to zero. I mean, remember, a is a matrix. Lambda is a scalar. x is a vector. So you can't just say a minus lambda, right? A is a matrix, lambda is a scalar. Okay? You have to put the identity matrix here. And then you have this x is equal to 0. Which means the vector x 
is in the null space of this new matrix. So the new matrix is <coughs> A minus lambda i is a new matrix. Let's call it A tilde. And we would say, and therefore here, A tilde times x is equal to 0. I'm just rewriting this one. Okay? Which means x, the vector x, is in the null space of A tilde. The, you know, looking back at this thing. The number lambda needs to be chosen so that this has a null space. So in other words, we want this to exist. How are we going to make sure that this exists? How are we going to make sure that this has a solution? Remember that? Up, 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 up. Here, remember this? Ax is equal to 0 has a unique solution if determinant A is not equal to 0. This has a unique solution, x is equal to 0. If you don't want x to be equal to 0, then determinant A must be equal to 0. If x is not equal to 0, then this must be equal to 0. If x is not equal to 0, okay, then determinant A must be equal to 0. And for us, x equals 0 is not a solution. I mean, this is the obvious solution, right? In the eigenvalue problem, this eigenvalue problem is written for x is not equal to 0 because if you put x is equal to 0, of course, you always have a problem. That's not an eigenvector, right? 0 times lambda, 0 times a is, of obviously, it is 0. But I, this is not the eigenvalue problem. The eigenvalue, eigenvector problem is for x's that are not equal to 0. Okay? Which means x must not be equal to 0. x must not be equal to 0. For x not to be equal to 0, a must be equal to 0. The determinant of a must be equal to 0. Which is the determinant of a is here, this must be equal to 0. Basically, you will take the determinant determinant of a minus lambda i must be equal to 0. And this is the equation we always use in order to find the eigenvalues, isn't it? So we would take this, remember, I'm sure you have done this, for minus lambda, or let me, let me write it here. Maybe I can remove all this stuff now. I can take all this stuff now. A minus lambda i. Let's write it down. It's 4 minus 5, 2 minus 3, minus lambda 0 0 lambda right identity times lambda I had ones over here multiplied lambda you have this this will be equal to 4 minus lambda minus 5 <laughs> 2 minus 3 minus lambda okay this is a tilde as I described so the determinant of a lambda must be equal to 0 for the eigenvalue problem. So find the lambda that will satisfy this. Can you find the determinant here? 4 minus lambda times minus 3 minus lambda plus 10 should be equal to 0. So lambda square. 
um, minus 4 lambda plus 3 lambda um, 12 plus 10 is equal to 0 and the square minus lambda minus 2 is equal to 0 lambda you will have two solutions because it's a second order thing and you can find two solutions over here minus one and two so these are the eigenvalues we have two solutions, not one. There's two eigenvalues. How did I come to this point? You see how I came, came here? In order for x to be not 0, this has to happen. So for this to happen, I, write, I tried the lambdas. And there are two lambdas that satisfy this situation. So two different lambdas will satisfy this. But now I have this two lambdas, it's quite straightforward to find y and z. Right? And that's what happens over here. You basically put this now into the equations, and you have two equations every time, and you can solve it. Right? So let's do that. Um, let's for, for the first one, let's say lambda 1 is equal to minus 1, right? So let's do that. A minus lambda 1 times i times y and z should be equal to 0, right? It's this equation here. If you do that, you get what? Um, all right, you get 5 minus 5, 2, minus 2, y, z is equal to 0, 0. Can you find the solution for this? y and z, 1, 1, will be one solution, and that's one eigenvector. So, basically means take that matrix, A matrix, multiplied with this eigenvector, it will be as if you multiplied this eigenvector with a minus one. Okay? So that's that. Do the same thing for lambda two, which is what now? It's two. Do the same thing for lambda two, you will find another eigenvector. It will be here. Five two, that's another eigenvector. Okay. So now we have a solution. First solution is, first solution is, just bear with me for a few more minutes, we'll be done. The first solution is u1 of t is equal to e to the power of lambda 1 minus 1 times t times the eigenvector 1, 1. And the second solution is, 2 is equal to e to the power minus lambda 2 t. Uh, sorry, this is 2 plus 2, 5, and 2. Two solutions, OK? Now, if you have taken differential equations, you might remember that these two solutions are called two particular solutions. And the general solution is a linear combination of these two. And the linear combination is written here, this plus this. So the general solution will be u times c1 e to the power lambda 1 t x1 plus c2 e to the power lambda 2 t times x2. And you will see that this c2 and c1 will be uh, functions of the initial conditions. OK? So if you do all this. Okay, you will find C1, C2, you can see how that works. You will finally have the actual solution that looks like this. 
The solution of the problem that we were trying to solve over here will look like this. Vt is equal to 3 over e to the power times t plus 5 e to the power 2t. And Wt will be a function of e to the power e minus 1t plus 2 e to the power 2t. Okay? So this is the solution. Question number one. Is this diverging or is it converging to zero? Will V and W go to infinity as time goes by? Yes, of course, because you have 2 to the power, e to the power 2t. So as t goes to infinity, this number will grow to infinity. This number will grow to zero. Doesn't matter. V and W will grow to infinity, for sure. Okay? Where are the eigenvalues here? The eigenvalues is here, are here. Minus 1, minus 1 plus 2, plus 2, the eigenvalues are here. So, without even looking at anything, just by looking at the eigenvalues, I can tell you right now that this is going to go into infinity. And these are the eigenvalues of this A matrix. Okay? So all you need to do is look at the eigenvalues of the A matrix, and if at least one of them is positive, you will go, go, go to infinity. All of them mu must be ne negative. Okay? These eigenvalues can also be complex numbers, right? If they're complex numbers, things are a little different. If they're complex numbers, let's say this is a complex number, e to the power lambda t, and say lambda is complex, what's going to look like? It's going to look like this, alpha plus beta i, let's say this is a complex number. So this would look like this, e to the power lambda plus beta i times t. So it will be e to the power lambda times e to the power beta i t. But you might remember that, that this is nothing but oscillations, right? In fact, this will be equal to e to the power lambda times cosine beta t plus i sine beta t. So this will just be an oscillation. So it will be still this lambda that will decide if this will grow to infinity or not. And this is, when we write this in the complex plane, real and imaginary, we want all the eigenvalues on this side of the complex plane for stability of the A matrix. Okay? So I want to stop here. Next week I'm going to recap from here. Okay? I mean, there are a few more comments that I want to make. And then finally we're going to start our... Uh, controls problem. I will put this on the web. Please take a look and read through the steps and try to recap everything. This course is now being recorded. It will be on the web as soon as possible, as I understand. So you can uh, re-listen to the lectures if you uh, if you want.